Hey, Wilson Taylor here. Welcome back guys. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the newer F100 field monitor. And then we're gonna be going over some of its features. But be sure to stay tuned towards the end. I wanna show you guys an accessory that you should get. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. As we look at this field monitor from newer, remember it's a seven inch field monitor. It comes with a hood or as some refer to it as the sunshade. It also comes with a hot shoe that'll fit right on top of your camera. On that hot shoe has the ball joint to where you can swivel the field monitor at for different angles. And it's a standard quarter 20 thread hole on the very bottom of the filled monitor. So you don't need any special attachments. In the box, it also comes with the HDMI cables. One of them is a mini HDMI end and one is a micro HDMI end. It also comes with the AV cables. Keep in mind that it does not come with any batteries. Batteries are not included. Some of the features is a 1280 by 800 screen resolution, supports up to ultra HD 4K input signals. The HDMI and composite inputs has a headphone port in the back, built-in speaker in the back. The batteries are L series batteries, so you can use any of your standard Sony batteries with this. Some of the nice features is the buttons are here on the bottom. Some of these field monitors have buttons on top. So when you're trying to look at the image as well as look on top of the buttons. So that's a really great feature being able to just look at your image as well as have all of the function buttons. They're nice and clear, easy to read, easy to get to. So that is a really great feature. It has an IPS LCD screen. What does that mean? In-plane switching. It gives you some of the best viewing angles, some of the best color and better accuracy. It has a 160 degree wide view angle. You can still see the screen so very well. Almost at 180 degrees, you are still able to view this monitor. The contrast ratio is 1200 to one. So what does that really mean? Well, think of it like this. A more expensive field monitor like the Lilliput Q7, which is also a seven inch monitor, is priced around $469. Its contrast ratio is 1000 to one. Most consumer desktop LCD monitors only come in at around 1000 to one. Another selling factor on this monitor here, its brightness is 450 candles per square meter. What does that really mean for the average person? When you are out, perhaps in a real bright light setting, you're going to be able to view this monitor very well. Most consumer desktop LCD monitors are right around 200 to 300. High-end monitors these days have a brightness of right around 300 to 350. When you first get your monitor and you turn it on, here's your on button. Takes a couple seconds to load. And if you notice, as soon as it comes on, it'll specify what mode you have it on. So here, if you change between, I'm using an HDMI, so then it goes to AV. It shows I have no signal because I'm not using AV. If you press it again, it goes back to HDMI. So here's your left and right arrow, and what this does is controls your volume. So be sure and as soon as you turn it on, turn your volume all the way down. That way when you plug it in, it doesn't get any feedback. Next is your menu button. You notice here under menu, the very first thing that comes up is your picture mode. If you notice that some of the things are grayed out, 
it is because on picture mode, it's set automatically as a default to dynamic. You can use the F1 and F2 arrows to scroll down onto picture mode and go over to user. Now you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and color temperatures. Next, we have the OSD language, which is the on-screen display language. Aspect ratio, which is set to auto. No signal, blue. So when there is no signal, the screen is just blue. OSD trans to adjust the level of transparency. OSDH to adjust the OSD position in horizontal. OSD V to adjust the OSD position in vertical. So you can take the menu and move it over and get it more out of your way if you would like. If you scroll down to the OSD H, it'll move it over. So hit your up and down arrows, scroll over, and then come over to these arrows and you can move the menu screen if you wanted to put it to the right, maybe out of the view, and then now you have that set at 99, and then go down one more to the OSD V, which is going to be the vertical, and you can go down with that. Put the menu screen to the bottom if that's what you would like. There's also more features, so again using this F2 arrow. When you look at the menu, don't just think that there's no more features. OSD time, you can change the time. Up, down, zoom, left, right, zoom, software upgrade, and then you can turn around and reset it all if you would like. Next, we have the center marker. You can turn that on and off. Now you can see the center marker is on. And if you notice this little red line, and what the red line is, is your safe frame. Image freeze is just to freeze it. Image flip is, let's say that you have the camera upside down, or if you're using the monitor upside down, you can flip the image so it's upright. Check field toggles between the blue only, red only, green only, and mono modes. This is to help calibrate the image. P to P, is pixel to pixel mapping allows you to emphasize on individual chosen elements in the shot. This feature is essential for ensuring that you are in focus. Next you have focused assist. Go down here and let's turn that on. If you notice the picture grays out so when you first turn this on don't think that somehow you've messed up your monitor or something and if you notice what it is focused on is red so that's how you can tell if you are in focus or out of focus next we go back into our menu let's scroll back over and the last one is some things that we've already discussed which is your center marker safe frames check field and focused assist and these are just shortcuts your f1 f2 f3 and f4 you just click on f4 and you know you're right there on focused assist so if you're looking to try to make sure an image is in focus or not, you can just quickly hit the F4 and use it. And as soon as you know that you're in focus, you can click back out of there and go back to the colored image. You can change every one of these shortcuts and assign something else to it if you would like. Hey guys, we're gonna take a look at this accessory that I had mentioned earlier. We'll also take a look at another accessory, but we'll take a look at this one here and unpackage this. It's a must have for this, but make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below. If you like this kind of content, Make sure to hit that like button and the bell icon. That way you get notified every time I put out a new video. But something I wanted you guys to think about and remember that this monitor here has the icon here for the battery that just stays on all the time. So if you do not remove the battery, it will drain it. So just make sure to remove the battery. There's really nothing that you can really dislike about this field monitor. It's around $100. So again, it's a budget monitor. I would recommend getting yourself a smaller HDMI cable because it comes with one that's a, a couple feet. This one here is 18 inches, stretches out, works very well. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at that accessory I had mentioned earlier. Open this thing up and show you what I recommend you guys getting. As you can tell, this is a hard case for the field monitor. Now, I think this hard case was around $13. Of course, we'll leave links down below. An emphasis on the word field. This is something that you're going to be taking out. You're going to be using. You don't want it just thrown around in your camera case. So go ahead, spend the $13, get yourself a hard case for it to protect it. All right, guys, hope you liked it. We'll see you in the next one.